Kosi Sikeleli i Afrika. God bless Africa. This is our national anthem. Now, there's a phrase in there that resonates strongly with me as a geologist. Uns ewige gebertes. In English, our everlasting mountains. Well, today, I'd like to talk about these mountains. They're a range that I love, I grew up in, and call my home. They're fascinating and incredibly beautiful, but they're also very, very ancient. Our everlasting mountains of the Cape. So, to orientate you, I'm talking about mountains that are on the southern tip of Africa, and they're highlighted here by these red arrows. And before I uh, talk about the gifts that these mountains have given us and that we should be thankful for, I should give you a brief history of these mountains, a quick one. But by quick, I mean their 300 million year history. So their story starts at a time before Africa, when the supercontinent Gondwana was still assembled. And it's along the southern margin of this supercontinent, highlighted in red in this diagram, that a great mountain range formed. And this formed from compressional tectonic forces that drove the rock together, buckling it, contorting it, folding it, and up rose an enormous mountain range that spanned the length of the, con the supercontinent. And this mountain range actually was so big and so heavy that it weighed down on the tectonic plates that it existed on. And that weight caused that tectonic plate to subside. And in that subsided region of the Earth, sediments began to accumulate. And we call this a sedimentary basin. And that's shown in green in this image. And in South Africa, we call this sedimentary basin the Karoo Basin. So just to show you what that looks like in cross-section, in blue, we have our enormous mountain range in the south. And immediately to the north of that, in, shown in brown here, are these layers of sedimentary rock that represent our Karoo Basin. And these sedimentary rocks are an absolute gift to paleontologists. And that they are the first gift that I'm going to mention today. I mean, just look at these fossils extracted from the Karoo Basin in South Africa. Absolutely stunning. On the left, a Gorgonopsian, an apex predator of the Permian that existed about 260 million years ago. And on the right, a younger fossil, a dinosaur, a sauropodomorph massospondylus, which lived about 195 million years ago. And had we never found these bones, we would never have known that these ancient animals ever existed at all. And if it weren't for the Karoo Basin, formed and gifted by these great mountains, we wouldn't have this amazing paleontological record. Now, as a geologist, I'm interested in these fossils, but I'm also very interested in the sediments that encapsulate them. And so, looking at this little region highlighted, there's some mud and sand, and the origin of this mud and sand actually can be traced back to the erosion of this great mountain chain. And so it's not only the formation of the basin, but also the very sediments that are derived from the mountain that fill the Karoo Basin, bury these bones, turn them into fossils, and gift us our paleontological heritage. All right, so back to the story of these mountains. About 180 million years ago, the tectonic forces that created our mountain chain ceased. They stopped growing and the continent started to break apart. Now, this was actually a very tough time for our mountains because, one, they were separated from their brethren on the other continents and left isolated on the southern tip of Africa. And two, this was an incredible time of erosion, and our great mountains were reduced in size greatly. Their softer outer layers were removed, revealing a very tough, resilient inner core of the mountains. And this is what we see in the southern cape of South Africa today, that inner core that's strong and resists erosion. And those mountains have had that form 
for about 100 million years, exceptionally long. And this brings, us, brings me to the next two gifts that I want to mention that relate to the longevity of this landscape. And the first is shown in this image in the foreground, this shrubby looking vegetation. We call it Feinbos, and it's spectacular. It's a part of the Cape Floristic Kingdom, and this kingdom is incredibly diverse. There are about 9,000 plant species in the Cape Floristic Kingdom, and about 70% of them are endemic to the Cape Mountains. They grow nowhere else but on the valleys and peaks of the Cape. Right, and to, to put those numbers into perspective, there are more plant species in this small rectangle on the southern tip of Africa than there are in the entire landmass north of that red line. It's truly a remarkable vegetation. Now, a lot of effort has gone into understanding why this is the case, and a breakthrough study um, was done comparing vegetation type um, that has evolved in similar climates and uh, that exists in different parts of the world. In places like California, Spain, and Chile, they have quite similar looking vegetation to us, actually, that have the similar adaptations. However, these mountainous landscapes are relatively young and are still evolving. And so there hasn't been enough time for the plant lineages there to persist for a long period of time and diversify into many different species. Contrastingly, in South Africa and Australia, their landscapes are old, the mountainous regions are old, and so there's been time for those plant lineages to um, exist for a long time and diversify. And so it's the very mountains themselves and the stability of the landscapes that have gifted us the Cape flora. And some of these species are really spectacular. This is our national flower, the King Protea, and it smells magnificent. And the other day I was walking into a supermarket and I was encountered at the entrance of the supermarket with all these King Proteas and the smell just hit me as I walked in. And smell has a strong link to memory. And it's this smell that took me back in time to my youth, walking the trails and paths of the Cape Mountains. So this is a picture of my brother and I on some kind of trail. And um, I'm in blue over there, well on my way to becoming a geologist with my socks pulled up high and my backpack at the ready. But this smell actually takes us further back in time to a more ancient period a time when early humans occupied the Cape, and they too would have smelt the smell of the Protea. They too would have smelt the smell of the Buhu, the smell of the honey bush. And it's in this landscape that they existed for over 300,000 years. And we have evidence that uh, they occupied caves, um, and in these caves, communities thrived and grew and in a cave just like this, which is beautifully eroding out of a fold axis in the Cape Mountains, we have evidence of early art and the development of culture. And we have abundant rock paintings in the Cape Mountains, and these show um, incredible um, artistry, and I'm often left wondering when looking at these images, what were these artists thinking? What were they feeling? Well, nobody knows this exactly, but the mountains know, the mountains witnessed our first awakening as a human species. And I love these mountains. I grew up in them, and they're very special to me. I think we ought to be cognizant of what they've gifted us as paleoscientists and enthusiasts. They've gifted us the fossils of the Karoo Basin. They've gifted us the precious landscapes in which the flora, Feinbos, have evolved. And they've gifted us a home, a place where humanity could grow, thrive, and awaken. Nkosi Sikalele, Africa, and our beautiful, everlasting mountains. Thank you.